All right, hello and welcome to another Expert Insight interview. My name is John Golden from Sales Pop Online Sales Magazine and Pipeliner CRM. And today I am joined by Michael Altshuler, who is in Florida today. How are you doing, Michael? I am doing terrific, John. Yourself? Uh, very good, very good. And just to give you a little bit of background on Michael, he started a computer company, a copier company rather, at the age of 22, became a multi-million dollar business, sold it to Icon, Office Solutions, uh, most of you probably know or remember who Icon were. And then he went on to, after that, uh, to embark on several other ventures, but he spent a lot of time doing motivational speaking and really helping companies and individuals become the best that they can be and today we're going to talk peak performance baby right that's it man that's it <laughs> and that is how to become a better version of yourself every day so um michael when you say becoming a better version of yourself every day what do you mean well a question that i used to ask when i first got into the motivational speaking business doing keynotes and peak performance coaching, I thought the best question that could be asked is, what do the most successful people in the world do differently and better than everyone else? And that could be in sales, it could be in leadership, it could be in sports. What are the elite, the world class, the top 20% of the top 20%, the top 4%, what do they do differently and better? And years after I asked that question, I realized there was a much better question. It's not what do they do better, it's why do they do it? What drives them past their comfort zone to become the best or better version of themselves? See, everyone I'm convinced gets a blueprint mm -hmm. on how to be successful. You start a job. They're going to say, if you do this, this, and this, you'll be successful. Well, the challenge isn't, what should I do? The gap, the chasm is, why don't I do it? And the great ones found a way to do it were the ones that aren't so great, aren't achieving the highest level of success, aren't becoming the better version of themselves, why they're not doing it. And just a side note, I looked up how to lose weight. Not that anyone ever looked that up on the internet. Mm -hmm. Take a shot, John. How many hits do you think I got? How many results did I get on ways to lose weight? Oh, millions, I'm sure. Six million views. Mm -hmm. So no doubt, even if you chose 1% or 1% of the 1%, you're going to have a countless number of ways to lose weight. The challenge isn't that we don't know what to do. It's that we don't do it. Yeah. And that's why I started driving all my keynotes and my peak performance to unlock that mystery of what gets us stuck and why we don't do the things that we know we should be doing to get the results that we really want in our lives. Yeah, and that's and that's a great way of putting because I, I mean I totally agree. Whether it's weight loss, whether it's anything, is it does it? No, actually, there's a great quote by uh, Bruce Lee where he says, "Knowing and knowing is not enough. We must do." Right. And that that's the point is we know what we should do, but we don't do it, even though we know if we do it, we will get the results. So what have you discovered, Michael? What is it that holds us back from doing the things that we know will make us better, we know will help us achieve the things that we want to achieve? Well, there, there's a few things. What I always start with is uh, values. So we want to make sure that whatever we achieve, we're achieving the right thing. Zig Ziglar used to say, I don't care how, what a great attitude you had, how much effort you put into something. If you're on the wrong track, you're going to get to the wrong place faster. Mm -hmm. So the first thing is that with all my clients and what I encourage everyone to do is get a clear picture of who they are, who they want to be, what they stand for, and have a hierarchy of values. That's our moral compass. That tells us every day what we should be thinking about and what we should be doing. Beyond that, to answer your question specifically, what holds us back or what will compel us forward to accomplish the things we want to accomplish in our lives and squeeze the most juice out of life that we can squeeze? The first is mindset and beliefs. Your mindset, as Dr. Carl Dweck, professor, professor of psychology at Stanford University, said this in a great book called Mindset. There's two types of mindsets, John. There's a peak mind, excuse me, a growth mindset and a fixed mindset. Mm-hmm. And a fixed mindset, those who have fixed mindsets, and those listening to this will be able to clearly identify with this if this is them, are people who believe that the skills, talents, and abilities that they're born with and the circumstances, conditions that comprise their lives define who they are. And they'll never get any better than that. Right. And they never, those people always live mediocre lives, never achieve what they could possibly 
achieve and be, they never become the best version of themselves. Now, a growth mindset is exactly the opposite. They all believe that they're born with a set of skills, talents, and abilities. They also have conditions and circumstances in their lives. The, they don't believe that defines them. They believe that refines them. Mm -hmm. They believe that it's effort. A growth mindset is all about effort, persistence, and resilience. That the effort we put into something, commensurate with that effort, as long as we have the right roadmap, will determine how successful we are at whatever that is that we're putting our effort in. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? It makes total sense, Michael. But let me take you back a step for a moment because I think uh, I think that's such a fundamental point that you made there at the mid, uh, at the beginning. There is about knowing who we are, our hierarchy of value, what we want to achieve. Because I, I do honestly think that. A lot of people never sit down and actually go through that exercise of sort of saying, well, who am I and who do I want to be and what are the things that are really important to me? I think a lot of people just drift, right? Well, it's a great point. I'm glad you touched on it. Nothing, Even when I go into a high-powered corporate executive, I do executive coaching mm -hmm. and some make over a million dollars a year. And 90% of the people that I speak to, John, crazy, don't have a core set of values. Mm -hmm. And so Zig Ziglar said there's two types of people in the world, wandering generalities <laughs> and meaningful specifics. Now, the wandering generalities, to your point, let life and the currents of life take them where it may. And the problem is the world is upside down. It will have you valuing things you shouldn't and not valuing things you should. So people value things over relationships. Well, you've never saw a hearse pulling a U-Haul. <laughs> so we know we see all the, the, the suicides of these famous people who have millions and fans and and everything we would think on the outside. Would it be great to be them? Well, obviously not so much if they committed suicide. You see relationships, a Harvard study just concluded, 80 year study, that relationships are the cornerstone of happiness. Mm -hmm. You ask kids in their 20s, they say it's fame and money. So reality is that the best times that you and I and everyone listening have in their lives are conversations with friends and family members, laughing, telling stories, maybe a drink's involved, maybe food's involved typically, but it's those gatherings that typically give us the most joy in our lives. And, and to follow up on the values, um, I encourage people, I have five values. One is to honor and serve the Lord in everything I think, say, and do. The second is to be the best husband of my amazing wife, Emmy, be the best father I can be to my amazing son, Kyle. And the fourth is to serve others with the gifts, talents, and blessings I, I have, uh, have in my life. And number five is to be in the best mental, physical, and spiritual shape to serve my other four values. Now, when I go through my life, I think about everything I say and do, or don't say and don't do, the manner in which I do it. And I say, is that living my values? So there's two things I have my clients rate themselves on once they create their values. Mm -hmm. one, one is... Am I thinking about my values with everything I say and do and the manner in which I say and do it or things I don't do, which sends a message also. And then the second thing they rate them on one from 10, rate themselves on one to 10 is, am I living it ultimately right. and infinitely harder to live it than not? And the goal here is not perfection. It's progress. But you have to be clear to your point. Who am I? Who do I want to be? Barkowski said. If you don't stand for something, you'll fall for anything. <laughs> which is a great which is a great quote. And I do so I mean I do really encourage people to look at and to figure out like who you are. What does what does success in life mean to you and and you know what is that uh, what does that look like when you achieve it because as you say I mean if you know if you don't know where you're going obviously any path will take you there, right? So yeah, you yeah. have to know where you're going. And the second thing that you mentioned there about um, you know, whether you're a growth or a fixed mindset, it's almost like, you know, whether you have, whether you see the world in terms of abundance or whether you see it in terms of, of finite resource, because I think sometimes people get stuck, they sit back and they say, well, look, Michael's really successful, therefore he's taken all the success, there's none for me, so I'll just plot along here in my little rut, rather than saying, well, Michael's been successful, there's a lot of success out there, there's enough for me, I need to go and maybe learn from what Michael's done. Yeah, well, well first of all, I've made millions and I've lost millions. <laughs> no one ever knows the backstory. Henry Ford went bankrupt five times. The largest selling anthology in the world, Chicken Soup for the Soul, failed 166 times. They said it'll never work. And they it's persistence and resilience. And the universe is plentiful. And there's enough room. It's it's endless. It's infinite for all of us to 
live our lives the way we want and achieve what I think are the three core things that we all want when we peel back the onion, which is abundant joy, fulfillment, and peace. And that, when you ask the question, which is the best question we could ever ask ourselves, is why, the bigger the why, the bigger the try, why are we doing what we're doing? What do we hope? And then you ask why again? Why is that important to me? And why? You wanna to get to the heart of why this is important to you, what it will fill in your heart and your soul that, that needs to be filled. So, you know, to answer your question about abundance or address the point about abundance, certainly there's plenty for everybody. And uh, that gets us to our second point, which is part of mindset, and that's beliefs. Mm -hmm. And beliefs are the, is the lens, the filters through which you see your world based on the meaning you gave experiences and what other people have said about you, what you've said about yourself. And, uh, you know, Henry Ford had the best quote about beliefs. He said, whether you believe you can or you believe you can't, you're right. <laughs> so, so at the end of the day, so many of us have these negative, this negative self-talk, which is another key part of self-development and peak performance. But this negative self-talk is really based on this internal processing unit that we have in us, which is our belief system. And if we believe we can't do something, we never will. And it's that meaning that we give to what other teachers may have said or friends may have said about us or failures. We define ourselves based on failures and therefore we never try things or we have excuses. I'm too poor or I don't have the right education or I'm too fat or I'm too thin or I have the wrong skin color. All those are negative beliefs, what they call self-limiting beliefs, and will hold you back from being, doing, and having everything you want in your life. You need to examine what you say to yourself in here, and if it's negative, you need to press the cancel, cancel, delete button and move on to something that's empowering to say, I can do it, and then support yourself with people around you that encourage you and believe in you and, and can help you achieve your dreams. Yeah, and I, and I think that's I think that's really important what you just touched on because we all carry, uh, we all carry baggage around with us, right? And I think that's one of the things that maybe we don't always recognize. And as you say, like maybe release that baggage, maybe, you know, check it in rather than carry it on. Uh, and um, do you think people, I mean, when you work with people, do you discover and maybe help them discover that they have maybe a lot of baggage that's holding them back, uh, st stuff that happened in the past, stuff that they don't need to hold on to anymore? Yeah, I, I, I think we all do. Mm -hmm. And uh, part and parcel of that is once you identify what the values are, excuse me, the beliefs are, uh, I think that's, you, you determine that by your self-talk. Mm -hmm. And most people, so that brings us into the self-talk yeah. area that we have to, I coach my clients to think about what you're thinking about. And if it's negative, there's a great book by Mo Robbins out now called 54321 Go. And the key is just go. Whether you have a limiting belief or uh, uh, an empowering belief, mostly a limiting belief that's holding you back from doing something as that negative self-talk, which by the way, we have 50 to 70,000 thoughts. The average person that goes through our head every day, 65% of which are negative and from a negative thought emanates everything. In fact, Frank Outlaw said this, watch your thoughts. They become words, mm -hmm. watch your words. They become actions, watch your actions. They become habits, watch your habits as they become your character and watch your characters, it becomes your destiny, all from your thoughts. Mm -hmm. So thoughts are powerful, and, and, and thoughts are coming from and, and continue to be part of you when you connect them to your belief system that says, oh, I can't do this or I shouldn't try to do this based on fear, and the fear is based on beliefs. So a, a great, like I said in that book by Mel Robbins, five, four, three, two, one, go, don't even think about it, just go and do it, and you'll build courage and you'll build positive beliefs by doing that. But there's a whole process to get rid of negative beliefs. But the first step is you have to be aware that you have them. And then once you're aware of them, then you have to work on pressing the cancel, cancel, delete, mm -hmm. and replacing them with something uh, positive. Yeah. Yeah, it's a t it's I mean it's definitely not an easy thing, right? Because as you said, I mean I even I'm even surprised at the statistic that it's 65%. I would have thought it's even higher to be honest, uh, you know, the negative uh, chatter that goes on in your brain yeah. uh, on a daily basis. Um so what are some of the uh, what are some ways uh, I guess the first thing is probably to recognize the negative chatter and 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 don't give in or agree with it, right? Because it, it's got to, it, it takes some effort to overcome that, yeah? Yeah, yeah. It's, it's interesting. I talked, I have a mastermind group, uh, mm -hmm. a few of them, and I was with the mastermind group yesterday, and we we're going over the week's assignment, which was self talk. 
think about what you're thinking about. And here's the thing. We are never, because we live in a negative world. Mm -hmm. There's negative crap all around us all the time. And it penetrates us because whatever we're involved in all the time, there's people that are rude. There's people that are obnoxious. There's people that are irresponsible. There, there's people that are evil. It's constantly bombarding us. And because of that, it affects us. And it affects us to the extent we let it affect us. So here's the key. When something happens that affects us negatively and we catch ourselves, you're, you're right. The first step is always awareness. We say, oh, this is negative. It's happening in my head. I'm aware of it now. We're never, people need to understand, we're never going to avoid or escape the fact that negative thoughts come into our head. Mm -hmm. That's being human. It's being alive. It's living in a world that's upside down that has a lot of negativity in it. The question is, and what the elite, the, the happiest people in the world, the most joy-filled people in the world are able to recognize in the moment that this is negative and they're able to exit out of it. And the goal here is not to not let it in as much as it is once it comes in to not let it affect you, get it out quickly and not let, let it continue to replay in your head over and over again. And the first step you have to, to accomplish that is be aware of it. And I call them buttons and triggers, press a button, do something to get you in another mental state, physiology, sit up straight, clap your hands, snap a rubber band. We we're talking about all these different things you could do to get yourself in another mental state thinking about something different that's positive or doing something different. Call someone who is who is a positive force in your life, who has a great attitude. Call someone who's funny, who has a joke. Whatever it takes to snap you out of it and get you focused on something new and better and empowering and positive, that's what you need to do. Uh, and you just touched on something there because I, th I think this is a, another great point is, I mean, you were saying like call up somebody who's positive or whatever. I think one of the other things you need to look at because let's, what happens to you know, all of us, you know, at some stage of our lives, right, you know, if we're feeling negative and we're listening to the negative talk, what do we do? We go and we look for people who will reinforce that, right? So we go and look at the opposite. We look for the, the people who will reinforce the negativity as opposed to what you just said is call somebody who's positive. I mean, that's a, that's a habit you got to get out of, right? Yeah, well, you know, there's so many little things. There's big things and there's little things <laughs> that affect uh, a person's success, happiness, peace, and, and fulfillment in their lives. One of the things that I talk about is that we are the sum total of our five closest friends. You've heard that and I've heard that before. If you hang with the eagles, you'll soar with the eagles. If you hang with the dogs, you'll get the fleas. Mm -hmm. So paramount, I would say up there with beliefs, is critical. Look critically at the people that you surround yourself with, the things that you surround yourself with. That is who you're going to become. Because we all as human beings have weak moments. We have negative things happening and if we that happen in our lives. And if you're hanging out with people that continue to join the, your pity party mm -hmm. and say, let's invite more people to join this pity party, the, the pity party will never end. It's okay to have a pity party. Keep it short and keep it to yourself. So the key is surround yourself with people that are uplifting, that are encouraging. I call them, you have battery changers, chargers, and battery drainers in your mm -hmm. life. Get, if you can't charge the batteries of those that are drainers, you have to cut them loose. Hang out with people that are battery chargers. Yeah, Don, and I think that's a really critical point. And I think this is one where people really struggle because uh, I've, I've preached to people a lot over the, the last number of years that you're better off reducing your circle to people who contribute positively that you contribute positively to their life they contribute positively to your life and if it ends up being one person or even no people for a while it's a lot better than having been surrounded by lots of people who are taking you in the wrong direction and unfortunately as you say i mean we're in a world that's upside down and with social media and everything everybody feels like they need to have five bazillion people where they, even where they're virtual people around them right yes yes i I find, listen, you know, I, I heard in church the other day that uh, we are dependent. Now, in church, we're dependent on God. I'm dependent on God in my particular faith walk. But we're dependent on each other. We're dependent on our employees if we're leaders. We're dependent on our partners if we have a partner. We are dependent. We're an interdependent people. We depend. No one can go this road in life and in business alone. We all depend on certain things. But we want to depend on things that are uplifting, that that feed us. Listen, I have down times. 
And there's people who breathe confidence in me when I'm lacking confidence. You know, anyone, even a pro football player who's making $15 million a year. I'm going to, this is my, my best point, $15 million a year. When they have a bad play, their physiology, they walk off the field, their head is down. I'm thinking you pay me $15 million a year. <laughs> I'm never, my head's never going to be down. Mm -hmm. But they walk off the field. The first thing that happens is players and coaches come over, pat them on the butt, tap them on the head and say, that's all right, you're a winner, you're still a champ. Let's just get better and go out there and make it happen. We know you can do it. So they learn, but they have short memories. They go back and they just produce and they execute based on what they train hard at doing. But the key point is when they walk off the field, the highest level of commitment, focus, determination, mind memory, muscle memory, income in our world, when they walk off the field, they need other people supporting them, encouraging them, and breathing life into them and confidence into them that they're losing in that moment based mm -hmm. on an incident that happened that was negative. Yeah, no, I think I think it's a great point. Well, listen, we're bumping up the end of our time here, but uh, I'm hoping that you're going to come back and talk some more because I think there's a lot more we can discuss. But before we go, Michael, uh, do you want to tell people a little bit more about yourself, how they can learn more about you? Sure, of course. Uh, you can certainly go to my website. It's uh, Michael Altshuler. That's A-L-T as in Tom, S-H-U-L-E-R. Dot com. Uh, I have a podcast in there. I interview Shark from Shark Tank and Harvey McKay, who's one of the top business entrepreneurs in the world. So some, some great stuff there. Also, you can email me at michael at michaelaltshuler.com, and you can call me directly at 561-818-6387. And on my website, there's a free ebook on goals, 7.5 steps to achieving extraordinary goals. It's a, an absolute must because we have to start with the end in mind, as Covey mm -hmm. said. And that's a must that you, you have to get. And I'll be happy to share with you and, and uh, go over with you any way that I can help take your life to the next level. Yeah, listen, that's fantastic. My name is John Golden, uh, Sales Pop Online, Sales Magazine, Pipeline of CRM. Michael Altshuler, great talking to you today. See you all again for another expert interview really soon. Okay, thank you, John. Take care. So I encourage you to subscribe to salespop.net, the online sales magazine. Also subscribe to our YouTube channel and then comment. Get involved in the conversation. Love to hear what you have to say.